disaster scene here uh, in our state. It's been a remarkable year, close, just shy of 4 million acres now burned year to date in the state of California, 3.95 million acres. You contrast that this time last year, uh, 158,000 acres were burned. 158,000 this time last year, just shy of 4 million acres have already been burned in this historic wildfire season. Five of the six biggest wildfires in our state's history have occurred just since August, August 15th. Uh, just consider um, August 15th, uh, where we had an unprecedented number of lightning strikes, 11 thousand or so lightning strikes over a 72 hour period uh, that precipitated in uh, a number of these larger fires and what we now refer to as fire complexes uh, as many of these individual fires begin to come together in these larger complexes. Uh, the August complex continuing uh, to burn uh, very soon will be over a million acres again simply without precedent something we could never have imagined. Uh, even a few years ago here in the state of California. The LNU, SCU, uh, not just the August complex, but the Creek uh, Fire Northern complex being now the largest five uh, out of six fires that we've ever experienced in our state's history. Uh, we're here at a, an elementary school, uh, a victim uh, of one of our two recent fires, Zog Fire, the Glass Fire. Uh, these fires continue to rage, the fire complex that we are in and around here, just 5% contained. Some 57,000 acres have already burned in this complex. Um, it's a site familiar to many folks here uh, in the Napa region. Uh, and it's a scene that's also very familiar with people in the Napa and Sonoma regions that have been torn asunder by wildfires uh, seemingly every single year. Uh, this drumbeat uh, where people are exhausted concerned, anxious about their fate and their future, not just their safety. And so clearly we have our work cut out for us to deal with not only suppression, uh, but prevention strategies, deal with the immediate uh, as well as strategies to address the long term. Uh, as it relates to the immediate, uh, we continue to uh, be immediately focused on suppression strategies, particularly here at the Glass Fire. 2,100 firefighters are working this fire uh, exclusively. Uh, we have firefighters from all across the country, not just across the state of California working these fires. We have mutual aid system that includes now six states that are providing resources, firefighting resources, other mutual aid resources, including aircraft supporting our National Guard, it's men and women. Uh, we'll continue to request and have continued uh, our pursuit of more assets out of state to help us uh, with these fires, in addition uh, to continuing our mutual aid uh, from all over the state, which will amplify as we pull away from other complexes and begin to resource even more fully uh, the focus of our energies here in the northern part of the state. Good progress has been made on the vast majority of the 23 active fire complexes in this state. Real progress is taking place in some of the larger complexes. The Zog Fire, this complex in around uh, Napa, Sonoma, uh, we're putting all we have in terms of our resources, particularly over the next 36 or so hours as the winds begin to shift directions uh, and as the winds begin to increase. We were just up the hill already at the higher elevations, one, 1,000, 2,000 feet. Uh, those wind bursts are already 10, 15 miles an hour. We expect them as high as 25 to 30 uh, miles an hour overnight and into uh, the morning. And so we are maintaining our vigilance. Evacuation orders are in place and around Angwin, uh, where we are stones throw away. Uh, and we encourage people to take very, very seriously the evacuation orders coming from our sheriffs, our mutual aid, California Highway Patrol. Don't risk your life. You can replace your property. You can't replace a loved one or a life lost, including your own. And that's why it's incumbent upon us to take very seriously this moment. And I say that uh, as someone that's been up here last few days uh, that saw uh, the aftermath of those 50, 60 mile an hour winds on Sunday, Monday, where you saw these spotting incidences where fires were coming up all over the place in a nanosecond. The ability to speed for these fires to move where you may think it's over the ridge and you're okay. Uh, within a moment, uh, there could be spotting related to these embers uh, that are flying. And in these conditions, these hot, dry conditions with these winds, the vast majority of those embers 
actually will ignite fires. It's not the exception, it's almost the rule. And that's why it's absolutely incumbent upon people to take these mandatory and recommended evacuations very, very seriously. Uh, we continue in our pursuit uh, to support proactive forest management and vegetation management. Uh, we completed 35 high profile projects here in the state of California uh, to focus on prevention. Uh, we have put a historic amount of money into suppression, including getting 858 seasonal firefighters, a full complement in force just in the last 90 days uh, out working these fires. I'm working on next year's budget already. Uh, we'll release it in January, but I can assure folks that we'll put even more resources in this space on suppression pre-positioning assets, more technology from infrared cameras uh, to the ability to use LIDAR and radar and satellite technologies, getting more fire engines and personnel, not just temporary and seasonal, but full-time personnel. We'll continue our aggressive, without precedent, historic forest and vegetation management efforts. We have substantially increased those efforts in the last two years, and we will increase them more into the coming years, including the requisite partnership with the federal government. We signed a memorandum of understanding just six or so weeks ago with the US Forest Service, the first time in state's history that we've now developed a partnership uh, with the Forest Service to double the amount of acreage that we are actively managing uh, with prescribed burns, uh, with vegetation management, forest thinning that is judiciously considered targeted uh, to vulnerable communities and done always with an environmental lens. And so that is going to be a big part of our effort moving forward in addition to prepositioning assets and continuing our suppression efforts. I want to thank again the men and women uh, of uh, local law enforcement for supporting uh, our wildfire suppression efforts, keeping people safe, our sheriffs, uh, our uh, men and women uniform of all stripes, uh, including uh, our police officers. I want to thank the California Highway Patrol and, of course, uh, our extraordinary uh, workforce at CAL FIRE and the mutual aid system of their colleagues that have come in from all over the country as well as from other parts of the globe. We just had Israeli firefighters fly back to Israel. We've had Canadian firefighters that have helped us in this state in the last few weeks that are back now in Canada. It gives you a sense of the scale and scope of the support systems that we have in place here in the state of California. So with that, uh, of course, we're here happy to take any questions. Well, we've been doing just that. We utilize cap and trade money, $200 million a year for our vegetation management. Uh, and that's happened over the last three years, that investment. And that includes private landowners, includes uh, public uh, lands that are managed by the federal government, including the state lands, 3% that are managed formally by the state. What we do is we don't look at those jurisdictions. We look at priority. We look at vulnerable communities, we look at ingress, egress, we look at historic patterns, and that's when we put out our portfolio of priorities that include private lands, not just those federal and state lands. We did 35 high-profile projects that impacted 200 vulnerable communities, got those projects done within 15 months. Some of those projects, quite literally, not figuratively, were designed to be done in 15 years. So we were able to pull those projects uh, forward, do them much more expeditiously, and you'll be hearing over the course of the next number of weeks dozens of more projects, including on private land, that we will prioritize for the same kind of active forest management that's required of this moment. Uh, 
Well, we have 17,000 active firefighters working the fires as I speak on these 23 complexes throughout the state. We peaked just shy of about 20,000 active firefighters supporting our mutual aid system from states as far as New Jersey uh, and with substantial resources from states uh, like Texas, including our neighboring states uh, up in the Pacific Northwest, notably Oregon and Washington. We have extraordinary mutual aid system uh, with local governments, not just other state entities, as well as our voluntary firefighting force, which is second to none. Uh, and to the extent people contract that support, you've seen it actively uh, here in Napa region. I've seen a number of wineries with private uh, firefighters or fire force uh, that are working those fires. Uh, I'm committed to continuing to increase uh, the total number of not just seasonal firefighters here in the state, uh, but we did this year an $80 million additional commitment uh, to increase the number of firefighters that are full-time equivalent firefighters. So we are at ranks we haven't been in decades. I want to continue to bolster those ranks here in the state. And we are always looking for efficiencies. We're always looking for mutual strategies and mutual support. Uh, and to the extent uh, that our mutual aid system is insufficient, uh, we would always consider other uh, uh, strategies in order to supplement resources. But right now, uh, the strategies we have in place, we think are adequate, even in the extreme. And we are dealing with extreme that we've never dealt with in our history with these lightning strikes and we hope to never experience something like this again though based upon some of these larger global trends uh, we're certainly uh, not assuming that going forward. Well, it's not just my private life before I got into politics and the fact that we we're involved in four wineries here in Napa, but a lot of family up here. Just left my cousin a moment ago, works for Congressman Mike Thompson. Uh, I've got a lot of very close friends and I've got a lot of employees up here uh, that have been torn asunder in the last few years, lost their homes. Uh, we have folks right now that don't know if their homes uh, have homes to come back to. Uh, we have people, employees, that don't know that they have a place to come back to work. And so, look, I, I have all of these things in a blind trust. I don't actively manage these things. Uh, and I'm very cautious about that. And I think it's an important thing that people in elected office that, uh, that maintain that firewall, forgive me. Uh, but as it relates to having a deep empathy and understanding uh, for what's going on up here, I can assure you I do. Yeah, we're not going to give up. We're going to deal with the immediate, which is suppression. We're going to deal with the immediate, moving into the next fire season, which is prevention. And we're going to deal with the medium and long term, which is bolstering our resources, both equipment and suppression technology, personnel, human resources, but also look at the long term uh, issue, which is a trend line. Hottest August in history. Hottest recorded temperature on planet Earth, at least since 1931 in Death Valley just a number of weeks ago. Uh, we're seeing the hots getting much hotter, the dry is getting much drier. We're seeing what traditionally have been smaller, containable fires become unprecedented mega fires. We have 163 million dead trees because of an unprecedented drought between 2011 and 2017. We're dealing with extremes that scientists had predicted. We're dealing with temperatures that objectively, not subjectively, are hotter than they've ever been in modern recorded history in the state of California. So many of the things we projected, projected and predicted would occur in 20, 30, 40 years are taking place today. And that's why we need to decarbonize our economy uh, that creates opportunity, uh, that creates uh, a strategy uh, that's inclusive, where we're not leaving communities behind, uh, and that we future-proof the state of California, which is my commitment and resolve. Day 
Well, there's no state in the country that's done more on paid sick leave, workers' comp, addressing the pandemic and health supports, worker supports, eviction protections, moratorium uh, on a series of other uh, issues that create compounding stress on families. We've tried to provide unprecedented supports for working folks and earn income tax credit over a billion dollars distributed in the last number of months. And we're trying to address the immediate needs of people that have been evacuated from their homes and taking our COVID protocols and getting people out of congregate shelters to the extent possible into individualized hotel rooms uh, where they are health uh, and their safety are considered based upon the COVID protocols. Uh, we have learned a lot through our evacuation and communication strategies because of incidences that have occurred in the last number of years in and around uh, this region of the state. And those are uh, being utilized in real time. The relationships that we form with county sheriffs, local health officers, local uh, emergency operators is second to none. Uh, there's a familiarity. Uh, including our protocols on PSPS, these power shutoffs, $50 million we're distributing today to cities and counties to help support their local efforts on resiliency uh, and protocols for evacuation and supporting communications infrastructure uh, even uh, during those PSPS uh, protocols. So we're, we're putting everything we can uh, in the immediate and again, never giving up uh, situationally on getting these fires suppressed getting back uh, into a framework where we are managing more actively our forest uh, and preparing for next year's wildfire season with urgency. Governor, California is often painted as fierce. You came up in a presidential debate. Our fires came up in a presidential debate. What did you make about how that was? I'm glad. I mean, climate change wasn't even brought up in the 2016 presidential uh, campaign, at least in the debates. It was wonderful to see it in the first debate. Um, unfortunately, uh, we don't have the kind of support that I think we deserve as Californians, as Americans, 40 million Americans, as it relates to support from the federal government to actively manage uh, their roughly 60 percent uh, of a forest. Uh, we've been doing that for the federal government. Uh, the majority of the work that's been done on federal forests has been done by uh, the taxpayers of the state of California. We want to see more support in that area. Um, our president clearly has a different point of view. Uh, than 98% of world scientists. Uh, and I encouraged him a few weeks back when he was here. Uh, if he wasn't interested in scientific knowledge, uh, he certainly uh, should be aware of his own eyes and the observed evidence of what's going on here in the state of California, reminding him what happened at the campfire just a few years ago uh, when I first had the opportunity to spend time with the president uh, talking through these issues. Uh, and so we're hopeful uh, that we're making a dent. And I thought it was encouraging that it came up in presidential debate uh, to continue to raise consciousness, not just for the president, uh, but for others across this country, uh, that climate change is real, it's severe. Uh, and in closing, uh, that Mother Nature has joined the conversation. She bats last, she bats a thousand. She's chemistry, she's biology, she's physics. She is present in this debate and in this conversation. Answer is uh, unequivocally no, and that's demonstrable by the uh, guidelines that we put out last night. And I'd encourage uh, the, um, uh, the questioner to take a look at the guidelines we put out and the, the tier that we place the reopening uh, of those theme parks uh, as an example, a proof point of my assertion that we are not uh, putting the health and safety of, uh, of people visiting the state uh, or recreating in the state at theme parks at risk. One more question, sir. Um, regarding the confluence of coronavirus, of the pandemic, and of wildfires, um, here in Sonoma County, for an example, um, our advance toward um, being able to reopen a little more has been hindered by the wildfires. Three quarters of our public health staff is evacuated. Yeah. Give to help communities. 
Well, we're, we're actively engaged working with your local health officers, working to offset impacts, not only on contact tracing related to wildfires, but substantial impacts related to testing uh, because the wildfires. You saw our total daily average of tests in the state of California drop from about 150,000 to below 100,000 because of all of these active wildfires, over 8,200 wildfires year to date in the state of California, 3.4 million of the 3.95 million acres that have burned in the state have burned just since August 15th. And that's impacted our entire healthcare delivery system, the economy of the state, uh, and certainly impacted um, our ability to meet the demands and expectations of 40 million people. So we'll continue to actively work to support and supplement efforts at the local level. Uh, the distribution of the PSPS money today is again a proof point example. 13 million to cities, 13 million to counties, 20 million to special districts, two and a half million dollars to tribal governments. We put those dollars out earlier. Uh, we prioritized those dollars in a way to help support more broadly the health and safety of communities impacted by bad air quality associated uh, with these fires as well uh, as impacting the ability to provide quality health care in a system that's impacted by power outages and evacuations and the like. So with that, thank you all very much for the opportunity and privilege of being here. And let me just say this, I've got four young kids in elementary school and I can't imagine for the children and parents, the families uh, that may be seeing these images, what's going through your mind, all that uh, anxiety that you already had coming in uh, through this year and into the school season to see your precious school burn down. My heart goes out to every single one of you. And all I can say is the state, we're in it for the long haul. We're not just here for a moment. Uh, we're here to rebuild and to reimagine uh, your school and all the kids out there. Uh, we're gonna get through this. You're gonna get through this. And you hear those sirens out there? You got a lot of people that have your backs. We have your backs. And God bless you. We're very sorry you're going through all this.